Hi, I'm Kathy Dowdy from Material Obsession in Sydney, Australia, and I'm here today to introduce my new book for uh, spring 2019, uh, Organic Applique. Now, I did say applique, and I'm sure that if you're like me, that could be a very scary word, but what I've done is discovered applique for myself and figured out a really great way to make it accessible to people who haven't done applique before or even for people who have done applique before to simplify their methodology and to become more, dare I say, organic in their process. And what that actually means is that I find when I'm making a quilt, I really want to express my voice. This is part of uh, why I'm a quilter, it's part of what I want to be as a quilter and where I want to go as a quilter. And I find that when I share the language that um, we've developed uh, teaching in the shop, when I share the language of how we make our decisions, people actually can break through their own personal barriers. For me, applique was a huge barrier. I wasn't into preparation. I wasn't into um, technique necessarily, and I felt like my fingers were all thumbs. So when I discovered a product through c and Publishing called Wash Away Applique Paper, it made the actual process of, of doing the applique very easy. I could stop thinking about technique, start thinking about creativity, and that meant that I could take my original idea and shape and form it to how I actually wanted to see it happen. So. Um, Today, what we're going to do is walk through how I look at fabric and talk through how the chapters in the book that actually relate to selecting fabrics. And then I'll show you a little bit about the actual applique technique for making this quilt behind me, which is called Overgrown. It's one of the patterns in the book, and it's got lots of space for working with color, and it's also got lots of um, space for exploring your applique techniques. So the first place that I thought I would start is with the color wheel. Now, in my practice, I don't actually refer to a color wheel, but I think it's a good idea to be comfortable with what it actually represents, which is the spectrum of color. So when I, um, when I um, use this as a reference, it really actually translates into using fabric. And this is a sample that's actually in the book. And what it does is it shows you how solid fabrics will create lines versus using a variety of print fabrics that explore value relationships within the fabric. Now, there are lots of technical terms about color, but what I find is if you think about color as how you're going to create a line in your quilt, that basically simplifies how you're going to select your fabrics. And it's very easy to see that a solid fabric versus a series of print fabrics creates a very strong line. More subtle lines happen when you work through value of a color or temperature of a color. So what do I mean by that? It used to be, when we were working with color, we were directed to pick a light, a medium, and a dark fabric. When we move into more contemporary fabrics, it's not as easy to make that value decision about what's light, what's medium, and what's dark. So we have developed the, um, the ex we've explored that into working with warm and cool colors. And you can clearly see in this uh, fabric color wheel that the warm colors, the red, the orange, and the yellow, versus the purple, the blue, and the green, because they sit on opposite sides of the color wheel, they actually complement each other. And we call that contrast, which is kind of funny. Contrast and complementary are the same thing. So when I'm starting a project, generally what I like to do is to break my fabrics down into two piles. And that's a little bit confusing there. A cool pile and a warm pile. And then within each pile, I want to have light, medium, and dark fabrics. So what that means is I've automatically organized my fabric so that I can see where my contrast will be either blending, where the contrast is not as strong, and strong where, uh, where I need it to be. So for example, if I was to take the w darkest warm color and the lightest cool color, I would have a very strong contrast. But if I select my fabrics from the middle of the two piles, my contrast isn't going to be as strong, but I will still have a line. So this is actually a um, demonstration a piece that I made that's included in the book, so you can see that it's a re as a reference. And if you, if you look at this and you do this at the beginning of your patterns, or at the be beginning of your project, you will find that it keeps you a little bit more organized as you go. Another way that I um, look at fabrics and creating line is by using graphic prints. Now, by graphic prints, I mean a series of, of um, 
These are sort of spotty or dotty kinds of fabrics or something that reads as a spot or stripes. Now, these are a bit of a relief to say a more uh, motif driven print. So this is a lot of information to take on in a very short amount of time, but fortunately in the book you can read these, uh, read these words, you can look at these kinds of diagrams, and you can create the, your own versions of these to help you make your decisions as you go along, and I think that you'll find it very helpful. My, in my experience teaching, the most common asked question is how do I get the mix for my fabric? How do I make the kinds of choices that I'd say I make in my quilts? And I, I've really spent a lot of time developing that language, so I hope that you find that helpful. Now, in um, Overgrown, what you can see is I've used that concept of the warm and cool colors, where the warm colors are working up the quilt and the cool colors are working across the quilt. And then I've given a bit of space for the applique. And the reason that I've done that is my experience is really about piecing, and I love the fact that I can sit at my sewing machine and play with my stash, throw it up on the design wall, and create a quilt. But in the end, piecing is not as original as, for example, putting some applique on there. And I find that that really helps me to exercise my voice and make something unique to me. So the whole idea is I've given you in the book all the diagrams that you need to make this applique specifically the way you see it, but I would invite you to take those designs and to change them and affect them to your taste. You can change the scale of these pieces, you can change the arrangement, you don't need to be completely focused on exactly where the lines are in my quilt. Your quilt should look just like your quilt. So if we go back to this and we talk about the color, what I might do now is show you, if I was starting this quilt again, I might start with an inspiration piece. Now, for me, inspiration is a piece of fabric, and this one I think is absolutely beautiful. It's got really lovely warm pinks and coral colors set off with some mustards and some browns. So that is a really nice starting off place for me to start to look at other fabrics that I might like to work with this one. So what I did to prepare this for you is I went to my stash and I, I gathered lots of warm colors. And you can see that um, there's a wide variety of temperatures of colors. There's really warm reds and really cool reds, but there's also graphic prints and medium scale prints as well. So I think there's a really interesting give and take when you start to mix up all of these fabrics, even including, say, a plaid or a larger, more dynamic print. Um, but there, within that pile, there are lots of different elements of contrast that are working. So that whole thing just sort of moves in and out of itself and creates more interest. I'm not looking to create matching colors, I'm looking to create interest. If I get you to look at my quilt and really get into it and examine what's going on, that's a success for me. And then this would be the cool side. And again, you can see light versions, spacey prints, big scale prints, plaids, small prints, stripes, all these different fabrics will eventually come to create a really nice movement in the quilt working from light to dark. I mean, from warm to cool. Um, another uh, question, if I go back to that, uh, that I hear a lot is, oh, that's a big scale print. How do I cut it up? Well, the answer to that is simple. Cut it any way you like. And that, that fabric will give you lots of gifts in your quilt. You know, it may surprise you in one place having a focus of the pink and the blue, and it might surprise you in another place with the blue. But they will link together and create unity in your project. So how do we actually do the applique. Well, with the wash away paper, one of the things that I really love about this is the fact that I can download an image and print it through my printer. I can trace a design from a book or a pattern, or I can draw up my own freehand pattern. And that that showing of my hand and the little indiscretions or discrepancies that happen when I draw that, I go with that. I'm not worried about being perfect. I'm actually worried about, I'm not worried about anything except creating a design that I find enjoyable. So one of the things that I like to do, especially if I'm freehand drawing, is to take the wash away paper, fold it in half, and just use a marker to draw the design on one half. And then I know that when I go to cut it out on the line, that it will have symmetry and the design 
Well, I've actually done this already. The design will be the same on both sides. When I open it up, it'll, it'll be beautifully balanced. The other thing about using the wash away paper that I really enjoy is that once I've cut out, see this would be for my leaf shapes, and once I've cut that out, I don't really want to have the bulk of the three layers of the paper in my applique pieces because I'm predominantly a hand quilter and I don't want to quilt through all those layers of paper. So what I started to do was to cut away the middle of the piece, leaving only a quarter of an inch or seam allowance in my shape. So once I've cut away the bulk or the interior of that, a, a couple things happen. One, I have more wash away paper and I can continue to cut more leaves. And what this does is it gives me a series, as you can see, I'm not actually even cutting on the lines right now because that's part of my organic idea there. But I've now got a series of leaves that are different sizes but the same shape. So I'm using up all of my paper, I'm not wasting it, and I'm creating a, a, another point of interest by having a variety of different shapes. Not everything is exactly the same size. And once I've, once I've got this piece, there's a, a rough side that you, it has the glue on it and a smooth side. And what we can do now is, oops, is pin that, or iron that onto the back of my shape, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. Now, in the beginning, when I first started doing this, I used a glue stick and I would run that along the paper and then just push the seam allowance onto the paper. And what that did, in essence, was create a perfectly finished edge. Once the edge is turned over, and this is a nice, this is another little tip in here, these are nice, smooth, curved lines, so they're not difficult to do, but once I've turned that over, the actual stitch you're doing isn't too, just too different from actually putting binding on. Everybody puts a binding on a quilt, so that means not only your needle turn part is much easier and your stitch part is much easier when you have that paper in there to press your needle against. So you can use the glue to press those down or to turn those over to the back or not. That's your choice. In the beginning I did it, but then I got to a point where I really didn't need to do the glue. But it makes it nice and tidy. And another thing about that that's really nice when you're doing applique is that once those edges are turned over, I can actually see the weight or the impact of each piece that I'm working with in the finished design. So it takes away some of the mystery and some of the uh, questions that you might have well, is about will this look right at the end. So you can see here I've layered up using some warm and cool colors and a really dynamic stripe on the background. Once I've cut that shape out of my paper, I can now use that as a viewing template to see how my fabric might work before I actually iron the piece down. And I think this is a really valuable tool to embed in your practice. It's looking to the next step of where you're going and making sure that everything is going to work the way that you expect it. Not all of us are confident in our, in our work, but if we can practice things that help us to see where we're going, we feel more confident going there. So I decided that I quite liked this shape and I went forward with that design. But here's, here's another little shape and I quite like looking at, at this one. Say I was going to use this little tulip shape. So that would be my finished shape before I cut the back away. It's left my little viewing template. And what I find really interesting is that say in a piece of fabric like this one by Kay Facet, the temptation is to cut the very focal point out of each one of those designs. But if you're using your viewing template and you start to move the, this piece around, you can find these little joyful uh, expressions within the fabric that actually make the fabric do some of the work for you. If I was doing more traditional work, I might have cut separate pieces to make the the side the tips of these flowers a different color or something like that. But if I use the viewing template and move it around, I can find some really exciting gifts in the fabric that add interest to what I'm doing. Once we've got our applique pieces done, we might want to start appliquing them onto a background. And here I go back to thinking about color. When I first started uh, working in a patchwork shop, we used to buy quilter's muslin or beige background you know, by the mile. We had tons and tons of it and we sold lots of it. But now, 
our, the visual impact of our quilts is a little bit more exciting and we've learned that we can do more exciting things in the background. So where we would have started with a, um, a white background, then we might have moved to a black and white spot. Now we might go as, into something daring like a check or a plaid. And in the case of this, I want to, in Overgrown, I wanted to continue moving the warm and cool out. So you can see in the original, I used two versions of the same print, one in warm and one in cool. And when, for the purposes of this exercise, I did the same thing. I picked one warm and one cool plaid. And I think that this is a really fun and exciting way to work with applique. And once I've got that background there, I might just want to audition how my shapes might work. And once I've laid them on there, if I can still clearly see the line, even though there's print there, I can still see that it's going to work, I can confidently go forward. That's most of what I wanted to talk to you about today, but I just would like to say that there are so many tips that I've gathered from some of the most fantastic applique teachers uh, that I've ever met and I've looked at what they've done and I've looked at how it works with my process and I've tried to break that down for you in the 40 pages of technique in the book. So this is an excellent teaching tool as well as a good source for ideas and, and exploration of new ideas. And just as an, an example of that, this was a quilt that we did in a workshop in preparation for releasing the book and you can see this this was done by Robin Brooks who's one of the uh, people in my class she had never done applique before and by using the techniques in the book she was able to very successfully produce a really beautiful quilt using this pattern or any of the other patterns in the book so I hope you find that stimulating and that you're very anxious to get your hands on my new book organic applique Thank you for watching today. I'm Kathy Dowdy from Material Obsession, and you can find me on Instagram at mattobsgirl, or you can reach me by email through my website, materialobsession.com.au. Thank you very much.